little shocked. <laughs> because uh, both the slides and the equipment comes somewhere from the year 1977. <laughs> so I think there are some here who were not even born in the year. So it's very original. It's uh, the original puzzle together from the original preaching material we used to have in ISCOM around that time. This is coming from the days there was not even a video what to speak of CD. Nobody had an idea, but uh, some of the slides are from these days, uh, from our first travels from India. So they are very historical. These places you will see in the holy places, they don't look today exactly the same as they looked 1977. Uh, I was maybe last time four, year, five years in India. I was shocked when I revisited the same places, especially in Vrindavan. How things changed when I came first time to Vrindavan. It was a very quiet and peaceful little town with some rickshaws driving around. <laughs> now one has to be careful not to be run over by a Tata jeep. <laughs> you know, over in two meters. So uh, I will try to quickly install it. But you can see already the quality of the equipment is much better as today. This is approximately 15 kilo projection machine. <laughs> Make in East Germany. <laughs> I myself wondering how this equipment survived. As much as I'm wondering why I'm still alive. <laughs> so we are both surviving. Thank <laughs> you. 
So as we don't have a lot of time, I remember it was quite some time I showed this slideshow. I think it was 15 years ago last time. So, uh, at its full length, it takes uh, approximately three hours. But uh, we will go very quick and see how far we can get. So, this is, uh, this slideshow is giving brief glimpses of the holy place of Rindavan, the place where Sri Krishna appeared. Uh, for those who don't know, in India, that's where uh, Rindavan is located, it's near Agra. It became our pleasure always in front of Krishna Bhagavan Mandi and the Iskon Temple in Uvring Garden to see the Western tourists dropping out of their buses, confused on the way to Agra, because Agra Taj Mahal is usually where people are heading for, not knowing they're actually passing by the most holiest of all places on this earth, on this planet, the Krishna appear to perform his pastimes. So Usually, before one starts a pilgrimage, one takes a bath in the holy river, which would be here, the river Yamuna. And this is uh, in Mathura, the most suspicious ghat or bathing place where usually pilgrims takes place before they uh, embark on a pilgrimage. Krishna appeared here in Mathura along with his brother Balaram. And as everybody is encouraged to read Krishna book, it's a wonderfully summarized Srimad Bhagavatam uh, uh, revealing Krishna's pastimes uh, by Srila Prabhupada, who put the whole text of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is normally divided in Sanskrit shlokas, in a fluent English uh, in form of a, a practically stories which go into each other, exactly describing Krishna's appearance and his pastime. So once again we would like to point out that Krishna didn't appear, as even in India is taught so often, as some mythological figure or some uh, maybe powerful personality which lived in India once upon a time. This is atheistic and this is described in Bhagavad Gita as demoniac. Krishna is the supreme personality of God and his appearance is, has nothing to do with the birth of the ordinary living being. And so his uh, uh, activities on this planet Earth are called lila or pastime. Krishna as a god appears because of his own will, not because of a destiny or force of the law of karma. So uh, he appears for three purposes, to re-establish the principles of religion, to uh, uh, remove those who don't follow these principles, uh, and uh, uh, above all, to please his devotees. So therefore, his pastimes of such a uh, of such a colorful nature to attract the minds and the senses of the conditioned souls in this world, so they may start to meditate about him and be connected to him in this way, and finally focus their consciousness on him, returning back to him, back home, back to Godhead. 
So Krishna appeared even as a small boy, he was engaged in these activities to please his devotees and remove uh, the sinful personalities from this planet Earth. Uh, to go in details now into the stories, here Krishna was invited by the cruel king of Kamsa uh, to, uh, he was tricked, even as a small boy, to take up the challenge of a physical combat with the two uh, most powerful wrestlers. Uh, there comes a hope that these two transcendental brothers will be killed. Of course, the result was exactly opposite. Finally, Kamsa himself was dragged down uh, at that particular location and killed in the front of all the residents of Mathura. So this is once again the God. He is one of the local priests who are very enthusiastic to introduce me and my friends to worship of the Amuna for a good fee. Uh, this is, I don't want to go further into this. Some professional brahmanas may get insulted, but <laughs> India is, in India it can very easily happen that you get very aggressively approached by somebody who wants to teach you devotion to Krishna for a good fee. You know, there's always some rupee involved. So, Lord Chaitanya himself built them around these places. This is actually a statue of Garuda, the close to the similar place. And here in Mathura we find this temple. This is actually a place of Gaudiya Math. It's a temple, used to be the main temple of the Gaudiya Math mission. The movement Shila Prabhupada comes from, uh, started by Bhaktisiddhanta Maharaj. Uh, this temple is uh, for devotees who visit it. It's a Gaudiya Vaishnava temple, of course. And on the altar we find Radha Krishna. This was in January, so therefore they are a little bit more dressed. Lord Jagannath. And there is a deity of Lord Chaitanya on the left side, which was personally donated by Srila Prabhupada to this temple during his time as he was a Grihasta, what somebody could call today congregational member. So here we are at the origin, at the place where Lord Krishna appeared in Mathura. Uh, this big mosque you see in the back, uh, well, <laughs> it barely escaped its demolition at a certain point. Uh, but because even according to the Muslim religion, the mosque which is for 40 years not used, there is no worship performed, is desecrated, and it's not considered actually a temple anymore. This, uh, this mosque is not used. It is, there is no worship inside going of any kind. And this little structure you see in front, that's actually a Vaishnava temple. So uh, uh, this is called Janma Bhumi, the place where Krishna appeared in the jail of Kamsa, first time, uh, in his four-handed form, he manifested as a baby uh, to Vasudev and Devaki. In this structure here in front, I don't know, I hope, I don't know it's today, but you can go down there in a cell, and they show you even, supposedly, the cell of the prison where Krishna first time appeared on this planet of Asati and Devaki. Kamsa's prison. So next to it, you see a new structure in the back, that's a, a pure Vaishnava temple. Not a Iskon temple, but it's a Vaishnava temple built next to it. I have to say, with considerable inspiration from Prabhupada's books, because you find in the temple whole shlokas and decorations simply taken from Prabhupada's books as well. This is, once again, the temple next to it. So we know from Krishna book that Vasudev and Devaki, uh, at the point of their marriage, were attacked by Kamsa, who heard a voice from the sky, uh, a prophecy that the eighth child of Devaki will actually cause his death. So being a demon, he immediately got activated and actually was so furious on the spot that he wanted to kill uh, actually uh, uh, Vasudev's wife on the spot, which is unheard of, unseen of before. So Vasudev, by his expertise, cooled him down and promised him to deliver all the children being born in the future 
to him for his judgment if he wants to kill them or not. And in this way it comes out specified temporarily. Finally Krishna appeared and was transported from the prison uh, by Vasudev uh, and Ananta Shesha's protection uh, through the river of Yamuna to Gokul. They are in protection of the Gokul citizens. He spent actually his childhood with his foster parents. Nanda Maharaj. And there he performed all his childhood pastimes, including killing the demon Trinavata, stealing Bada and sharing it with the monkeys. All his childhood ecstasy parents are experiencing with the little children. This is simply a replica of Krishna's pastimes. Krishna actually is performing similar pastimes, but of course uh, without the problems of having small children, which a very parent can admit is sometimes not an easy task. So, uh, but all these uh, exchanges have their spiritual origin. What we are experiencing in the material world, it's a perverted reflection. But they have all their origin in the spiritual world. This is something very unique. You don't find it in any religious tradition. Uh, this concept of God being the supreme, the greatest, and the oldest. Basically, these two concepts are there. But that God is stealing butter and feeding it to monkeys, uh, that's uh, quite exceptional. That's really a very, very personal understanding of God himself. I remember when this picture was painted and published first time, it appeared on a German cookbook. And when we got the, when we when we published our own cookbook, and this picture was actually published along with that, Shri Prabhupada's comment was, "Be always aware that all these coward boys, sitting together with Krishna like this and sharing his meal, are great great yogis and very very advanced devotees, who got this after millions of lifetimes." with this very, oppor very opportunity to share, actually, Krishna's me meals in such a personal way. So finally, uh, Krishna, <laughs> uh, sometimes even the residents of Vrindavan who were considering Krishna nothing else, as if they are Krishna, a little boy, got the glimpses of his real opulence as being the supreme personality of God, like in this, on this occasion, where Krishna actually was accused as a small boy that he had eaten dirt. Children do this, they put everything in their mouth. So uh, Krishna was arguing, no, he didn't taste it any dirt. So his mother was opening his mouth and testing, looking in the mouth, if he still has some traces of dirt there. But instead of the dirt, she saw a whole cosmic manifestation, all the universes and everything inside, in that small boy's mouth. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but maintaining her relationship to Krishna as a mother, well, there's such a revelation has really no place in such a relationship. So she, for a little while, she saw my son actually is God. He has a whole universe, whole, whole, whole universe are in his mouth. But insisting to having that motherly relationship, she got covered immediately again. And she actually, you know, served him in this mood of mother by chastising him. It's okay, you have all the universes in the mouth, but please don't eat this again. <laughs> so. Finally, Damodara, Krishna in his name, he has many names, Damodara. By stealing Bada and being naughty, Prabhupada defines naughty boys as being intelligent boys. He said, naughtiness is a sign of intelligence because a stupid boy cannot invent so much foolishness and so many tricks. Prabhupada defined himself as being very naughty when he was small. He had all kinds of tricks and always, you know, sometimes even dangerous things. He said, this is a sign of intelligence. He finds a stupid one doesn't know how to be naughty. So Krishna was very, very intelligent of being God, so he invented all the time things which put his parents in a great anxiety. 
So finally, Mother Yosha decided to tie him with a rope to this mortar, uh, and uh, so he doesn't go anywhere anymore. In India, they do that. In the West, it's not unknown. She would go in a park here and find a child being tied up on foot to a rope, on a rope, that tree. Probably people will call police or something like this. In India, Indians are very practical. There's so much, you know, traffic, so dangerous. So they just simply tie the child on a foot or around the belly to a tree. You know, and this way you can be sure he doesn't go anywhere. So, you know, so it's a very common sight. I saw it several times in India. And the children I got kind of used to it. Okay, they tie me up here, so what can I do? You know? <laughs> It's not considered harsh, this is actually protection. <laughs> so uh, Mother Yashoda actually finally tied Krishna, but as we know, as the story goes, which is quite amazing, anytime she tried to tie him up, the rope was too short. So she tied another piece of rope to that rope, and it was again too short. And again, and again, again, until, until she used all the rope she had, and it was still too short. So she started to really sweat, she was so confused. And Krishna was just smiling innocently. Because when Krishna wants the rope being too short, then it's too short. You know, and it doesn't matter what you tie to it, it's still too short. Because Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, amongst the cheaters, I am the biggest one. <laughs> so if I want to cheat you, sorry, you lost it all. That's it. So Mother Yashoda being totally confused at the end, so Krishna was very merciful, finally allows himself to be tied up to the modern. So this pastime is especially dear to the devotees. And it's celebrated every year, especially now in autumn, it will be again celebrated by singing a special song, Dhammarayastaka. And this is a special time of the year, which is considered even more auspicious while performing devotional service. So this is in Vrindavan. This is like this picture you will not see anymore. This is the old riverbed of Yamuna, where Krishna really performed his pastimes. Nowadays, so far I remember they covered it with asphalt and there is jeeps driving around. <laughs> it's, uh, this is taken in 1970 where things were really still peaceful and simple. So when you walk, this is called the Parikrama path, and then you go from one place to another where Krishna performed his pastimes. So the first place here at the riverbed of, old riverbed of Yamuna, she is flowing approximately 500 meters further today. Uh, it's where Krishna performed his uh, pastime with the snake Kaliya. Kaliya was uh, poisoning the whole river Yamuna. Everybody who drank water from that river actually died. So, of course, the villagers were very upset because their cows were dying and even the villagers were dying by tasting this poisonous water. The water was poisoned by this snake, Kaliya, who was living in it. So to the great shock of all of the residents of Vrindavan, Krishna himself jumped into that poisonous river and provoked the snake to emerge from that river. And even for a while, he actually allowed himself to be captured by that snake. However, very quickly he rises on the hoods of the snake and uh, danced on his head so skillfully that the snake never had a chance to bite him instead of then put a kick on the head. And there's a special rhythm even he developed. When Krishna does something, he does always like menacing simultaneously. A special dancing rhythm, which is, I heard, even copied today. The special dances in India, it's called the Kaliya step. And they have a special step and they dance, which imitates the Krishna step as he actually danced on the head of Kaliya. So not only he's that one of his qualities, he's an expert dancer. So he actually managed to dance so skillfully and so long that the snake became so tired, especially it couldn't bite him, instead of that Krishna was dancing on its head. So it became so tired that ultimately it gave up spitting all the venom and surrendered to him. And this is actually in the tree Krishna jumped from, that tree is still there, the, the branch of the tree. He jumped into Yamuna. There is actually a little temple in the tree inside, which is consisting here the deities of Kaliya and Krishna on top, and the Nagapatnis, actually the, the, the wives of Kaliya, the yeah, wives. So they are actually praying to Krishna to allow 
uh, their husband to stay alive and not to kill him. Another place, Chirgat, is uh, a place where Krishna performs more, more intimate pastimes by being, uh, you could say, teenage boys. Uh, of course, teenage boys has this kind of idea sometimes. Uh, he followed the girls when they were going bathing, and as they put their dress on the beach, in India it's unheard of that boys and girls are sporting in the water together through separate. So he followed them, the gopis, and actually as they were in the river, he collected all the dress they left on the beach. And climbing up a tree, he demanded that they will all come out of the water and fetch their dress in his presence, which is, from a very point of view, completely unacceptable. Uh, but knowing well that all these girls are actually desiring him to be their husband, so in this way, indirectly, he fulfilled their desire. So uh, there is many, many more meaning, meanings to that, but once again, I can only point out, this has nothing to do with uh, some boys, uh, you know, stealing the dress from bathing girls in Copenhagen. You know, this is a very different uh, thing. You may end up actually in a police station. Uh, Krishna didn't end up in a police station. As a matter of fact, this ecstatic pastimes is glorified until today. Prabhupada no, said, this is the difference between God and us. When God steals butter, he is glorified for thousands of years and praised. He said, when you still buy the inner marketplace, they will beat you in the shoes on the head. You know, yeah, this is the difference. So, finally, Krishna collected that dress because actually they were worshipping Goddess Katayani with, this, with a secret desire uh, to have him as a husband. And finally, he was sporting with them in the waters of Yamuna. So, this is... Uh, Oldest, one of the oldest temples, this is also a scene you will not see today. Uh, the Madhinamohan temple, this was the first temple established. Vrindavan used to be just a jungle. Just a, just a jungle at the river of Yamuna, there used to be even crocodiles. And uh, the six Goswamis, the direct followers of Lord Chaitanya, more as 500 years ago, they got the mission from Lord Chaitanya personally to go to Vrindavan, where Krishna appeared, and uncover all these holy places which nobody knew. Everything was forgotten and covered by jungle. So they were the ones who were actually coming to this piece of jungle and being pure devotees and entirely empowered by Lord Chaitanya, they got the vision where which pastime took place. For other people, it was just a piece of jungle with some water, like some water puddle in it. But they thought, no, here Krishna did like this. Krishna did like that. And to make it evident for the public, they established temples in these places. And that's how the whole city of Vrindavan came about, actually. So here, I think Sanatana Goswami, one of the Goswamis, was sitting at the bank of Yamuna, which was floating by here, and a hill. It was, this hill was a little bit higher. And uh, he was sitting there, not knowing what to do. I mean, he was a Goswami. Goswamis don't have any bank account. They don't have big money to build temples, nothing.